we have a question from 2013 Amy 2 problem 15. The question is, let ABC be angles of an acute triangle with a bunch of these expressions and we have the last expression. And the last expression can be written as P minus Q times square root of R over S and we wish to find P plus Q plus R plus S. For simplicity, let's just let the last equation be equal to x and we wish to find the value of x. Now it's time to examine these relationships in depth, but before I do so, I want to focus on this part, that A, B, and C are angles of an acute triangle. That's telling us that A plus B plus C, so when you add up all of them, so A plus B plus C is 180 degrees, and since they are acute, we know each of them are, is less than 90. So maybe that's going to help us somehow evaluate some of these expressions. And how is this acute part helping us? Well, it's not very obvious right now, but we, we may be able to guess that since all of the ang angles are acute, we know sine of A, so for, for example, sine of A or sine of B or sine of C has to be positive, and the same applies for cosine because the angle is acute. We don't have to worry about cosine of A being negative in this case. Maybe that's going to help us narrow things down later on, so that's always good to keep in mind. But this part seems to be immensely important, that A plus B plus C is equal to 180 degrees. That's telling us that one angle, since we have all of these expressions with cosine of A, sine of A, sine of B, all of these, we may have to simplify cosine of C in terms of cosine of A or B or cosine of some combinations of A and B, and a similar thing for sine of C. So maybe it's, it's going to help out to write C in terms of A and B. So instead of having three variables, we only look at two variables A and B. So let's, let's maybe look at this to some extent. So we know C is equal to 180 degrees minus A minus B, or 180 degrees minus the quantity A plus B. And now we know how to evaluate cosine of C and sine of C in terms of A plus B because when you have an angle, so let's say you have an angle theta, so let's say theta goes like this, then you know 180 minus theta goes something like this. So that's 180 minus theta. So let me draw the angle. So 180 minus theta. And as you can see, the sine of theta and sine of 180 minus theta are the same. That's sine of theta, the y distance, and that's and this is sine of 180 minus theta, so they are going to be the same. But realize that cosine of theta are going to be same in magnitude, but one is going to be positive and one is going to be negative. This one is going to be cosine of theta, this x distance, and we know cosine of 180 minus theta is negative of that. So using this, we know c is equal to 180 minus this quantity a plus b, so we know cosine of c is equal to negative cosine of a plus b, and sine of c is equal to sine of a plus b. If you are confused, think of letting theta be a plus b and just work with what we have right here. So we, we can write cosine of c and sine of c in terms of a plus, cosine of a plus b and sine of a plus b. Maybe that's going to help us out later on. After all, we are utilizing the information that they gave us, that they are the angles of a triangle. Nothing bad is going to come from utilizing the information and looking in depth into what, what the consequences are. Anyway, now it's time to focus on all of these expressions. We have the first expression being equal to 15 over 8. So this one, if my tablet starts to work, is 15 over 8. And the second one is 14 over 9. And we let the last one be x. And x is going to turn out to be something like p minus q square root of r over s. So, let's, let's try to find the relationship between all of these expressions. Well, first of all, we have a symmetry going on. We have a symmetry, a very important word when it comes to mathematics. Realize that we have three expressions that are cyclically symmetric. For this one, we do not. We do not have cosine squared of c, and we have cosine of c multiplied by sine of a and sine of b. For this one, we do not have cosine squared of a, 
and we have cosine of a multiplied by sine of c sine of b. And same applies for the last expression with cosine squared of b, and we have cosine of b, and we have sine of c, a and sine of c. So all of these expressions are symmetric in a certain way. So maybe we can combine the expressions in, in, a, some, in a some symmetrical way, and we can try to expand from there. But what can we do with the expressions, though? Well, realize that we have these expressions like sine of a, sine of b, cosine of c, sine of b, sine of c, cosine of a. Then may make you think of sum and difference identities. Sum and difference identities for sine or cosine. Because sum and difference identities deal with things like sine of b, cosine of c, or sine of a, sine of b. So natural thing that you may try out is to add up the two expressions, add up the two expressions, factor out the common part, and see if you can simplify the remaining part using the sum and difference identity. So let's try to do so. Let's add up the first two expressions, and that's going to get us 15 over 8 plus 14 over 9 is equal to, we have cosine squared of a plus cosine squared of b and another cosine squared of b. That's 2 times cosine squared of b. We have cosine squared of c. And we have plus 2 times, realize that these two share sine of b, so we can factor this out. And inside, we are going to have sine of a cosine of c, cosine of c, plus, plus, sine of c, cosine of a, sine of c, cosine of a. And as we predicted, right away, we have the sum slash difference identity coming up right here. That's, that's equal to sine of a plus c using the sum identity for sine. So we have, what do we have? We have cosine squared of a plus 2 times cosine squared of b. All of these are going to stay the same, plus cosine squared of c plus 2 times sine b times sine of a plus c. And what is sine of a plus c? Well, sine of a plus b is sine of c, and we can do the same thing. We can make this cyclically symmetrical. So we know sine of a plus c is equal to sine of b, sine of b. Just as we proved that sine of a plus b is equal to sine of c, you can similarly make the same logical argument to say sine of a plus c is equal to sine of b. So we have this expression right there. That's telling us we have 2 times sine squared of b. And that's marvelous because we have 2 times cosine squared of b right here. So we have cosine squared of a plus cosine squared of c. And we have 2 times, we have cosine squared of b and we have sine squared of b, and we all know that cosine squared plus sine squared of the same angle is simply equal to 1. So things are simplifying extremely nicely. So we have this expression being cosine squared of a plus cosine squared of c plus 2 is equal to 15 over 8 plus 14 over 9. Now we're stuck. Where do we go from here? Well, let's utilize the symmetry part. Let's add up the expressions. We added up the first two expressions to get this equation right there. So maybe we can add up the last two equations. We can add up the last two equations. And we can add up the first one and the third one to get two more equations and realize that the same things are going to be happening. The same thing being factored out instead of sine of b factoring out in maybe sine of c or sine of a. But in the end, you are going to get the same symmetrical result. For the, for the first two, when we added them up, realize that we got cosine squared of a plus cosine squared of c plus 2. Cosine squared of a plus cosine squared of c plus 2. So now, using the symmetry, we know what we are going to get when we add up the last two equations. When we add up the last two equations, which is going to be x plus 14 over 9, we are going to get, just as, just as we got cosine squared of a plus cosine squared of c for the first one, we are going to get cosine squared of a and cosine squared of b. Because when we added up the first two, we realized that cosine squared of b's went away with sine squared of b arising to the right. So the same case is going to happen for the last two equations. We have cosine squared of c's that are going to go away with sine squared of c on the right. So we are going to have cosine squared of a plus cosine squared of b left. So cosine squared of a plus cosine squared of b, and using the same simplification, we are going to get plus 2. And using the same reasoning, the last one, when we add up the first expression and the last expressions, we are going to have cosine squared of b 
and the cosine squared of c left, and that's 15 over 8 plus x, and we're going to get cosine squared of b plus cosine squared of c plus 2. So we have all three of these expressions, symmetric once again, and now what do we do? Now what do we do? From the first expression, in fact, we can now find the value of cosine squared of a plus cosine squared of c by subtracting 2 to both sides. So if we have another expression, so if we have another expression with cosine squared of a and cosine squared of c, let's say cosine squared of a minus cosine squared of c was equal to some number, then we can combine these two equations to get to find the value of cosine squared of a and cosine squared of c, and that's going to help us greatly because now we can find cosine squared of b as well using the sum identity. So the natural thing to do is to get something like cosine squared of a minus cosine squared of c that we can combine with the first equation. And that's not very hard to do. We can just subtract these two equations because when you subtract these two equations, cosine squared of b's are going to go away and x's are going to go away. And in fact, 2's are going to go away too. And you simply have cosine squared of a minus cosine squared of c left on the right side, and we have 14 over 9 minus 15 over 8 left on the left side. And we know, cos let's just simplify this for the sake of it. So 14 over 9 minus 15 over 8, we can let the common denominator be 72, and we have 112 minus 135, that's equal to negative, negative 23 over 72, for the value of cosine squared of a minus cosine squared of c. How about cosine squared of a plus cosine squared of c? Cosine squared of c, well, we get that from the first equation right away. So 15 over 8 plus 14 over 9 minus 2, well, that's going to be 72 and 112 plus, plus 135. So there was minus 135. So now we're going to get plus 135. So let me make sure that looks like 135, and we are going to subtract 72 times 2, which is 144 from the numerator, and that gets us 112 plus 135 is 247, 247, subtracting 144 gets us 103 over 72. Perfect. So now let's combine this equation and this equation to find cosine squared of a and cosine squared of c. Let me just rewrite them quickly right here so it's easier to work with. Cosine squared of c is negative 23 over 72, and we know cosine squared of a plus cosine squared of c is equal to, is equal to 103 over 72. Adding them up, we get 2 times cosine squared of a is equal to 80 over 72. That's telling us that cosine squared of a is equal to 40 over 72. That's good to know. And now we can plug this into the last equation, perhaps. So we know cosine squared of c is 103 over 72 minus 40 over 72, or 63 over 72. So we know cosine squared of a and cosine squared of c. And by this, we're simplify this. 40 over 72 is 5 over 9, dividing by 8. And 63 over 72 is 7 over 9, 7 over 8. 7 over 8, dividing by 9. And now what do we do? Let's go back to what we wish to find. We wish to find the value of x. And we know, we know, we can just look at any of these equations. We know from this equation that value of x is equal to cosine squared of a plus cosine squared of b plus 2 minus 14 over 9, just moving this over to the other side, which is cosine squared of a plus cosine squared of b plus 4 9 So this is what we want to find. So we wish to find, so let's make sure, we wish to find cosine squared of a plus cosine squared of b plus 4 9 And we know cosine squared of a is 5 9 So we know cosine squared of a is equal to 5 9 And we know cosine squared of c is equal to 7 8 So now let's combine all of these exp all of these together. So we know cosine squared of a, so we gotta find cosine squared of b. Well, we know cosine squared of b is equal to is equal to cosine of b squared, and we know cosine of b is equal to negative cosine of a plus c using what we got from a while back using using this using the fact that cosine of b is equal to negative cosine of a plus c. So let's go back down. 
and we wish to square that. So we simply want to get cosine of a plus c squared. And we know using the sum identity, cosine of a plus c is cosine of a cosine of c minus sine a sine c. And what do we know? We know cosine of a, we know cosine of a is going to be square root. Cosine of a is going to be plus or minus square root of 5 ninths. Is it positive or negative? Well, it's going to be positive because the triangle is acute. Remember, we had an acute triangle. We had an acute triangle given to us. It was acute. So we know sine of a, sine of b, sine of c, cosine of a, cosine of b, cosine of c. All of those are going to be positive, and that's very useful to us right now as we are trying to find cosine of a and sine of a. So we know cosine of a. We know cosine of a is simply, so let's write this down. We know cosine of a is square root of 5 ninths. And similarly, we know cosine of c is equal to square root of 7 eighths. How about sine of a? Well, we know, you, we know sine squared of a is 1 minus cosine squared of a. So we know sine squared of a is 4 ninths. So we know sine of a is equal to square root of 4 ninths. And similarly, we know sine squared of c is equal to 1 eighth. So we know sine of c is equal to positive square root of 1 eighth. So now we just have to evaluate this expression. We have square root of 35 minus square root of 4, which is simply 2, over square root of 72. And we are squaring this. So we get, we get, we have 1 over 72. And squaring the top, we get 35 plus 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4 times square root of 35. We are so close. So we get 1 over 72 times 39 minus 4 times square root of 35. So we know the value. We know the value of cosine, cosine squared b. That's what we have found. We know cosine squared b is 39 minus 4 times square root of 35 over 72. And what, ha what do we have to find? We have to find cosine squared of a plus cosine squared b plus 4 ninths. So we have to find cosine squared of a, which is 5 ninths, plus this thing, plus 4 ninths. Realize that this part is 1. So we have to add 1 to what we have found. So we wish to evaluate 1 plus our expression. So 1 plus our expression. So that's going to be 111 minus 4 times square root of 35 over 72. So that's what we have. And what's our final answer? So we have to find p plus q plus r plus s, where our given expression is in p minus q times square root of r over s. And we know this thing is equal to 111 minus 4 times square root of 35 over 72. So we have to find 111 plus 4 plus 35 plus 72. And that's 39. Adding it to 72 gets another 111. So adding them up gets us 222. And we're done. The answer to this question is 222.